While remaining standing, take your Bible, please. And open to the book of Revelation. As we want to go into some prayers now. These are very serious prayers. Especially as the year is running to a close. Many of us don't understand why some things happen towards the end of the year. This will throw some light. In Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. If you are there, say yes. This, this is where we are going to pray about. Revelation 18, 11. Let's all begin to read from verse 11. Let's go. Go on. The merchandise of silver, precious stone, pearl, tiling, purple, silk, scarlet, and all time wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and iron and marble, go on, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. That's right. There is a strange market. And what they do there, they sell commodities like souls of men. In normal marketplaces, they sell commodities, items that people consume. But there is another market, a strange market. What they do, they trade. They actually trade in the souls of men. They trade in the souls of men. Some people were traveling from Suleja to Abuja. They entered a strange vehicle. May you never enter a strange vehicle. Let your amen be louder than that. They entered a strange vehicle. This is not a story. The vehicle diverted into a bush. Went straight down. The people there were overpowered. There are about 15 people in the bus. There were four people who were not really passengers. They belonged to the evil group. The soul traders. They marched the people, the 14 people away from the, from the vehicle into the bush. Into a strange temple inside that bush. And in that temple lied a large serpent. Big python. And they asked something like a weighing scale machine. Each of the passengers was meant to climb that scale. The first person climbed. The serpent came. Swallowed him. The serpent disappeared. After some time, the serpent came back. Second passenger. Serpent swallowed him. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. The seventh person was a woman with a child. She climbed. The serpent took the baby. Swallowed the baby and went. Came back for the woman. He tried four times to swallow that woman. It could not. So they asked her to step down. Two other people were there who had fire in their bones. The serpent could not swallow them. So those three were returned. After slapping their chest, that you will not remember what you saw here. But deliverance prayer made them to remember. Here in this country, traders, they sell souls of men. Very strange markets in our world. It is possible that even as you are here now, there are strange businessmen, strange market women, arguing over your price. It is possible that these evil merchants are already calculating the profit they will make for your soul. So this style is very simple. Stop them before they stop you. If you don't stop them, they stop you. Can you raise up your right hand in boiling anger? So powers assigned to trade with my soul. Your voice is not loud enough. You are a liar. Die in the name of Jesus. Bapor ikatesa tilaka. Yes. Yes. Aha! Something is happening over there. 
Yes, 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 yes. Yes. This is not a prayer to negotiate. Makate sate ya boshendera basante. In Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes, look at me. A family. A polygamous home. The man had three wives. Almost ten children. All the ten children were practically graduates. But one of them, but now they were graduates, now them, one of them did not go to school at all. And that's the only son of the second wife. As it now turns out, all the nine graduates are being fed by the illiterate, illiterate son of the second wife. All nine, no job, nothing. It's trading. They've been traded off. Traded off. Close your eyes again. Market place of darkness. Troubling my life. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Deal with the marketplace. You must set yourself free. You have to stop them before they stop you. In Jesus' name we pray. Some people are kinder than the Bible. <laughs> kinder than the Bible. The Bible says they shall destroy themselves. They shall destroy themselves. A woman from this fellowship was going home one night after a Wednesday service only for a robber to accost her at Ijora and pointed the gun at her. So bring your bag. The woman was a bit shocked. And because she was sluggish in handing over the bag, all she was saying was blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. The man said, stop calling that name. So the man started shooting the gun. And said, ah, this gun is not working. I, I use it just now, it's not working. He kept pulling the trigger. The thing did not work when it was pointed to that woman. So he, he now pointed it to, to himself, trying to check what was wrong. And it went off. It says, they shall destroy themselves. So, madam, just pick up a bag and run. Why he was shouting and crying on the floor. Can you shout this loud and clear? Powers! Hating my existence. Hear the word of the Lord. Destroy yourself. In the name of Jesus. Masetila katenda ya boshanta. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. Continue to lay your hands upon us. Lay your hands upon our lives. Make us candidate of your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. We start our school on Sunday. As a result of the last two lectures we have given here we have over 200 questions here we are going to have to devote a day to deal with all this but let's answer the few we can answer this morning then we can pick a day and then look at them thoroughly i don't really talk and my parents make it look like it's a bad thing especially my mother 
She thinks quietness is a very bad thing. She's always begging me to talk every time. I'm confused. And we, you should talk to your parents and answer simple, simple questions. Talk to them about what you are going through, about your life, about everything. The quietness we're talking about is not refusing to talk to your parents. It's for you to be quiet before the Lord and say only what is necessary so that you don't become a talkative. This one is from a 13-year-old girl. I don't know. I'm surprised that they're in the service here. So, excuse me, sir. I will not lie. I'm a talkative. Please teach me how to be quiet in school. I'm sure that uh, your teachers will teach you that one. Go to the teenage class, go to all those places, they will teach you. But like we said here, once you allow the Holy Spirit in you to get into gear, before you start talking, you will find that you only say what is important. Say, so, sir, if after praying and I kept quiet and I don't hear any voice, what should we do? You have to continue doing it. Constantly. Constantly. You practice. Practice. To get used to it. When can someone start quiet time? I think we answered that question last week. We said the morning hours are better. I discover that I always fall asleep when I'm waiting for God to speak to me. Then remain standing on your feet. If you find that you don't want to sleep off. Only a few people can sleep when standing. So stand on your feet. When I'm quiet after prayers, at times I hear bad things. Deliverance. You should go for deliverance or buy the book Deliverance of the Mind. One other thing we must have here, and listen very carefully, very, very carefully. There is always three major advice we give to young couples who want to marry. If they stick to those three advice, they should have no problems. If there is no opportunity to talk to them at all, at least when we stick those three to their brain and they stick it there, it works. The first point we make to them that one, there is no perfect marriage. And that in every marriage, they, they quarrel, they fight, they argue, but they settle it. There is no perfect marriage. Marriage is just a unity of two people who have decided to make it work. The second point we tell them is that families who pray together, they stay together. As far as husband and wife are praying together, morning, night, morning, night, the possibility of the enemy coming to scatter is zero. Anything that makes you to abandon your family altar is going to destroy that home. In fact, the Bible issues a curse on families that do not do family altar. Even if it's 10 minutes, the family must gather. Maybe in the night before they sleep or in the morning and pray together. That prayer is very powerful. So if you are here, you are not doing it. The Bible says, Woe unto those families that do not call on the God of Jacob. The third thing we tell them is that never go to bed quarreling. Because if you go to bed quarreling, the devil will be a third party on your bed that night. Those are the three points we tell them. But what I want to bring out of it is the issue of the family altar. Family that prays together stays together. After your quiet time, you can go for the family prayer meeting. Or after the family prayer meeting, you can go for your quiet time. If you decide to do, to do the family prayer meeting in the morning, most families do it at night. Now o'clock, everybody will gather for family prayer meeting. And as they do that, God helps each family. I wake up every day by 5 a.m. I start the day by praising and thanking God while I'm also preparing for work. Once inside my car, as I drive to work, I say my prayers and commit the rest of the day into, the, into God's hands. Can this be called quiet time? No, it's not. 
You are too busy doing other things. You are driving, traffic noise, everything. Instead of doing this, pick 15 minutes out of that morning and use it for effective quiet time. There is a brother who sees vision, but he's always talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. He talks from morning to night. Please, sir, is the Spirit of God speaking in him? Like we said last week, God is not a talkative. Anyone who talks too much really has not known God. This one said, can God talk to a man of God to do things that are contrary to the Bible? What is the answer to that one? No. Say like, stay away from your wife for one year or more. Do not collect salary while the children and wife are suffering. The man is not hearing from God. He's hearing from another world. Praise the Lord. Somebody wants to know the difference between baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues as a gift. Don't let that confuse you. Every believer must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Everybody. The Bible said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. So that is the evidence. But then there is something called the gift of diverse tongues. That one is different. When you receive that one, then you speak plenty of languages in the spirit realm. That's different from baptism. Baptism is the same, general. So don't let that stop you from the blessing. I gave a woman my clothes in 2006. Since then, I lost my spiritual power. What can I do? If you wrote that question, you should come and see us. Also, if you are the converted Muslim being forced to go back to your boy's friend's house because you've been thrown out, uh, kindly see us too. I think we'll take the other question some other time. Praise the Lord. Okay. This morning, for as short as the time will permit us, I want you to listen to me very carefully. I'm going to be very slow because I want you to understand this. I want it to be very, very clear to you. I want to start teaching on what I call the key to power. The key to power. It is better to teach a man to fish than to be giving a man fish. Because if you give a man fish to eat, you have given him a meal. But if you, if you teach him to fish, you fed him for life. So it's important. One of the greatest tragedies of our age, one of the greatest tragedies of the present day believers, is our powerlessness. This powerlessness has pushed many of us to areas we should not go to has made us to consult people we should not consult has made many of us to be running a task when you should stand your ground and say don't say the lord no but there is no power and it's a terrible thing and i'm praying for somebody here that whatever god needs to do in your life for you to receive power that cannot be insulted may the lord do it in your life today a seven for the man In Psalm 74, verse 9, look at this lamentation. A lamentation indeed. And the lamentation is so, so true today. If you are there, say yes. Psalm 74, verse 9. Say, it's a lamentation. Say, we see not our sons. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that know it how long. The prophets seem to be dying out. The prophetesses even almost appear as if they don't exist anymore. So nobody knows. And the power level is dropping. The present day believers are so powerless. 
But the Bible makes two statements. Listen carefully. One in Genesis, one in Galatians. The one in Genesis says, When thou art strong, thou shalt remove the dominion from your neck. When thou art strong, then you remove his dominion from your neck. That is, when you acquire power, then you can take any bondage the enemy puts upon you and put it back on the neck of the enemy. You can take the shackles from your body and put the shackles back on the enemy. If you are strong, if you are not strong and you try it, the enemy will now increase your bondage. The Bible tells us that be strong in the Lord. The Bible wants us to have power. That's the first scripture. The second scripture, which is more dangerous, and I don't want to go too much into that place today. It says, the heir, if he, he remains as a child, is a slave. Very powerful scripture. He's the heir to the throne. But since he's still a child, he's not better than the servants. Yeah. This is why many people are going for countless deliverance, countless deliverance. Instead of growing up, growing up, becoming strong. Because when you are still a child, no matter what promise God has made for you, no matter what bright future you have, as far as you remain a little child, you are not better than a servant. It's a very strong statement. Not better than a servant. It now goes on that you will be subjected to elemental forces. Because you are still a child. If somebody buys off the whole of this Lagos in the name of a one-year-old child, although he is the owner of the property, but at that age, there's nothing he can do. No matter how a man loves his child, you don't give a gun to a two-year-old boy. It's too young. So it's a child. Technically, it's still a servant. Same thing in the spirit realm. If at what time you ought to be teachers, God in his own, in heavenly estimation, by now you ought to be teacher. So heaven is expecting that by now you ought to be like this. But he finds that you are not there. Then forces that attack the level you are, they'll be attacking you. You'll be going for deliverance instead of just growing above that level. Grow above that level. Eh? I say, spirit husband submit your power. Submit your spirit husband submit your power. You are saying spirit husband should submit his power. You are still committing fornication. You have not grown above that. He will not submit any power. You are beginning to say, every lump in my breast disappear. Every lump in my breast disappear. But the time you were putting that breast into the mouth of an unmarried man and he was sucking it, you have forgotten. Instead of you to grow beyond that level. Where when they come to look for you, at the level they think you are, they say, sorry, I'm not in that level anymore. You can't affect me. The heir, if he remains a child, is not better than a servant. No matter what promises you have. No matter how great the things God wants to do in your life. If you refuse to grow, you are not better than a servant. That is why the enemy is having a field day. Just raiding people. That's why deliverance ground is always filled up. Because people don't want to grow. Because it's difficult to start growing. It takes discipline to sit down and pray for one hour. It takes discipline for somebody to abuse you and keep your mouth shut. It takes discipline to be offered bribe. You say, I don't want. It takes discipline to be offered what you should not drink. And you say, I'm not drinking. It takes discipline to sit down and pray in tongues for one hour. It takes discipline to say, sorry, I don't want to listen to that kind of music again. Take it away. More than at any other time, we need the raw power of God in our life. And I cannot tell you lies. I don't want to deceive anybody. I too will have to stand one day and give an account. There is no shortcut to spiritual power. But there is a key. You have that key in your hand. Whether you like it or not, heaven respects you. 
Whether you like it or not, when you speak, everyone back up what you are saying. Whether the enemy likes it or not, they may not like your face. They may not like you. But they will respect your God, whether you like it or not. A man may acquire power by promotion to a general in the army. But one day, they may retire him or remove him. A man may become a king. He may acquire power by becoming a king. But he may be deposed from that throne. A man can become a president. He became president. Then he acquired power because he's a president. But the same people who voted him into power can vote him out. A dictator can take over a country and acquire power by being a dictator. But that dictator, one day, the dictator could rise against the dictator. Just like Saddam Hussein. The same people he was dictating over eventually cut off his head. So that's the power of man. The power of man is transient. It is temporary. Ultimate power belongs unto the Lord our God. I'm praying for somebody here today. The kind of power that cannot be reproached. The Lord will give you that power in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. Let your amen roar like thunder. The power of man is a failure. I remember the great apostle, Joseph Babaola, went to visit a king in his palace. And the king wanted to tell the prophet how powerful he was. The prophet of God, you are here. They wait, 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 wait. And they ran inside his room. He brought out a cutlass. The cutlass was sparkling fire. Like this thing they call bisco was sparkling fire like that. Sparkling fire. Fire was coming out. And when you see a cutlass, breaking fire. When there is no electricity, there is no battery. So you see power. The man of God was looking at him unimpressed. He said, I've come here to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I said, but before I say any other thing, you cutlass, hear the word of the Lord. Shut up. And the light went. Fium. The man reigned incantation for the cutlass to start again. No way. I decree upon the life of somebody. Words that will cancel incantation will emanate from your mouth in the name of Jesus. This amen is too weak for this man. Immediately, the sparkling cutlass stopped. The biggest tree in the marketplace fell. That was the power base of the cutlass. Somebody spoke a word to a cutlass inside the palace. A tree fell in the marketplace. This, our Christianity, is so powerless. The basic things that our ancient fathers understood and they were able to draw the power of God, we don't even understand. Some of us are still arguing. But it is a lamentable tragedy to stay at the footmat of the enemy because of lack of power. So whatever is going to cost you, I recommend to you, I plead with you, follow these lectures. Acquire spiritual power for yourself. Because once that power comes upon you, you will be the first beneficiary. It's there you can help others. I beg you to do so. You will come back years later to thank me that, thank you sir for introducing us. Those of you are fond of running to pastors. What if the pastor you want to go and see is dead? What will you do? So the best thing is for you to sit down, study these strategies, master them, you to acquire, get the key, get the key. Don't depend on the power of man. Three people. All of them graduated abo abroad. Or at least they had up to master's degree. During the long time political era in this country, they wanted their candidate to become president of Nigeria. And they went to a powerful native doctor who did a powerful fetish item for them. And all they had to do was to carry a calabash to the barbage and leave the calabash there at night. 1 a.m. And that if the waves of the sea will come and take away the calabash, their candidate will win. But there is a rule. When they want to put the calabash by the sea, they must be naked. These three men agreed. 
And they went. Babbage. Packed their vehicle. Went to the sea. They put their clothes somewhere by their car. And they went there. Put the calabash by the sea. And waited to see when the next wave will come on. And the wave came. And took away the calabash. They were so happy. They rejoiced. Celebrated. They now went back. But by the time they got to where they left their clothes, the clothes had disappeared. The enemy had stolen the clothes. So what could they do now? They can't stay out through the night. So they got to their car, naked, and they live in Ikeja. 1 a.m., they drove us naked men inside the car. When they got to the first police checkpoint, police said, stop! Put on your inner light. When they put on the inner light, and the police saw three naked men, go, 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 go. They two were afraid. Bottom line, their candidate lost. That's the power of man. So those, are, those people are still running about looking for who we do, can do, who we do this. I just wasting your time. What's the key? I'm just going to introduce the key today. Then I continue again next time. When we were in primary school, they taught us one poem. I'm sure you still remember it. They called the fellow Humpty Dumpty. Who knows the poem of Humpty Dumpty? If you know it, read it and let me hear you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Humpty Dumpty sat where? On a wall. Then Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king and his men, they could not put the Dumpty together. In the eyes of the king and his men, that Humpty Dumpty that fell was finished. But in the eyes of God, that is the kind of person he's looking for. Somebody who is broken. Broken. Those are the people that can demonstrate the power of God. And this is where the problem is. In Psalm 34, verse 18. Psalm 34, verse 18. Psalm 34, verse 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saved such as be of a contrite spirit. It is only broken people that are close to God. Psalm 51, verse 17. Psalm 51, verse 17 says this. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou will not despise. The key to power is brokenness. Brokenness. That's the key to power. In the eyes of men, anything that is broken is finished. But God prefers broken people. When you are broken, it takes you to a new dimension to which no other doors can lead you. There are places very high that God wants to take us to. But the admission fee is brokenness. Brokenness. Those places that God wants to get us to, you can't get there through faith. You can't get there through victory. You can't get there through praise. But through brokenness. Before God can use a man or a woman greatly and deeply, he must be a broken man, a broken woman. If you are ever going to be made into the wine of God, it will have to crush you. Just like you cannot drink grapes without crushing the grape. God uses broken people for his program. The Bible clearly teaches that brokenness is the key to greatness. Before Jacob could be blessed, he was wounded by the angel in the wrestling match. Before Joseph could rule Egypt, was thrown into a pit, sold into slavery before he became what he became. Before Moses became the great deliverer, 
He lost his position, he lost his possession, he lost his popularity. So God will use broken people. The trouble of heaven is finding such broken people. In John chapter 12, verse 24, which is the last scripture we are reading before we continue next time. John 12, 24. John 12, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. When you put a corn in the ground, for that corn to grow and become big maize plant, that corn will break, and a small plant will, will break, and a small plant will come out through it. So, to God, only such broken things are useful. When God has an important task to do, He picks broken people. The kind of life that many Christians are living is a life of quiet, terrible habit, silent sin, which paralyzes spiritual power. When a person is broken, anything God asks you to do, you do it. But if you are unbroken, you'll be stubborn, you'll be unteachable. When you are unbroken, you carry out bad behaviors that do not prick your conscience. When you are unbroken, there is no godly sorrow for sin. You commit a sin, you don't feel sorry. You insult people, you don't feel sorry. You are rude, you cannot apologize. You are wasting time, you are unbroken. When your heart is hard to penetrate, you only want to do what you want to do, you are unbroken. When you are disobedient to God, you are unbroken. When you are hypocritical, you are not open to God, you are unbroken. When you cannot be humble, you are unbroken. When you are not deeply sincere, you are praying, you are singing, but it's superficial, you are unbroken. If inside you are a snake, you always strike back, fight back all the time, you are unbroken. If you are exhibiting unloving characters, it shows that you are unbroken. How does people who come to church to fight because of seat, bench, paper, they are completely unbroken. There is no way you see that God cannot touch you. All who fight and quarrel in car park, they bang my car, they do this, they're just fighting and shouting on the street. You are completely unbroken. You are as far from power as heaven is far from the earth. When you see somebody who is very proud and so uncontrollable, he's unbroken. But God is looking for broken vessels. When you see somebody who is highly undisciplined, he's unbroken. Who is always talkative and talkative, talkative. Only praying when there are challenges. You are unbroken. The key. Key. To power. Wherever you are. Whether you are a pastor, you are not a pastor. Wherever you are. This is the key. To hold that key in your hand. Your level changes. Your level changes. You become resistant to gossip. They are saying this. They are saying that. It doesn't bother your life. Your level changes. Your level changes. And let me tell you one thing. No matter how stubborn a mosquito is. A mosquito cannot land on the surface of an, a pressing iron. You plug to electricity and the surface is 200 degrees hot. But when it is cold, even cockroach can sleep there. The reason the enemy is playing games with many of us is because we still remain as a child. There is no power. We have titles without brokenness. Activities without brokenness. This is why our generation is so, so powerless. Bow down your heads on your seat. If you have questions, write it down, give it to the ushers. We'll continue next time on this teaching on brokenness. Bow down your heads where you are. Tell the Lord, Father, do something in my life that will make me your battle axe. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord yourself. Look at your own life. Any area you know that heaven has been confronting you, but you have not cooperated. Heaven has been telling you, son, daughter, 
I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with that. But you are just overlooking it. You are ignoring the voice of heaven. It will render you powerless. And what a disaster to have to run in the face of the enemy. Tell the Lord to do something in your life that will make you a battle axe. Enough of just consulting this prophet, consulting that prophet. You have an array of prophets to consult. You have 10 prophets, you have 20 prophets. Go to this mountain, that prophet. Go to that mountain, that prophet. All the prophets know you. When will you acquire the power for yourself? Every mountain, they know you there. Whereas you can convert your bedroom to a mountain. The hair, as far as it remains a child, is not better than a servant. That is your problem. Within the next few minutes, there are two prayers I want you to pray. The prayer is not against any enemy now. It's for yourself. And I want to encourage you. Pray this from your heart. It's a cry to heaven. And I'm sure heaven will answer you as you cry to him today. Everybody rise up on your feet with your eyes closed. The first prayer is one of the greatest prayers in scripture. The Bible says, Mercy gloried over judgment. Can you shout this loud and clear? My father, have mercy on me. Can I hear you shouting it? In the name of Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. The second prayer I want you to cry out, out loud for is this. David faced a Goliath. The death of that Goliath meant the promotion of David. The death of Uzziah was the promotion of Isaiah. The Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, then I saw the Lord. Some things have to die for many of us to rise and see the Lord. Can you shout this loud and clear? Power of Goliath. Power of Uzziah in my life. Death in the name of Jesus. Some people are breaking through here this morning. Batola kaya bo shentera bo sacha. Some people are breaking through. Some people are breaking through. This is not a day to negotiate. In Jesus' name, we pray. Finally, add this one. This is a prayer for the champions. Power! Power! That cannot be insulted. Can I hear you shouting that? From heaven. Fall on me now. Are you ready? When you say it once, convert it to machine gun prayer. Follow me now. Follow me now. Follow me now. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Can I hear you shouting again? From hell. Open your mouth and pray it in the name of Jesus.
Oh yes. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Aha! So that your words will become fire. And everywhere you go, darkness shall disappear. Receive the power. Receive it, 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 receive it. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. amen. Stretch your two hands towards this altar. Father, we thank you. Your word says in everything we should give thanks. Father, I'm praying for all your children that were brought to this morning, sir. That the kind of power that defies the enemy, the kind of power that cannot be insulted, that cannot be reproached, that cannot be demoted. And as many people as are stretching their hands forward here, Father, connect them to that power in the name of Jesus. I decree upon your life that the words of your mouth shall become fire to the camp of the enemy. You will trample upon every serpent and scorpion and upon every power of the enemy. The Lord blesses you from Zion. Make his face to shine upon you. You go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.